Hello guys! In this video I would like to report about the progress I'm making on Deep Sky Camera Pro version. Uh, my name is Michael Seeberger Weichselbaum, I'm the developer of Deep Sky Camera. And first of all, please don't ask me um, when Pro version will be released. I can't tell you an exact release date. It will be in 2020, but um, I don't know when Deep Sky Camera Pro version is ready. So I would like to show some of the new functions I've added to Deep Sky Camera Pro version. And on the screen here, you see two icons. The left icon, you know, that's Deep Sky Camera Beta. And on the right, it's Deep Sky Camera Pro version. Um, it shows M42, a pic I've taken a couple of years ago with one of my telescopes. So let's start Deep Sky Camera Pro version. Well, this is Deep Sky Camera Pro version. Uh, the user interface looks very similar to Deep Sky Camera Beta. Um, but I've introduced some new things. Uh, first thing, as you can see here, above the control bar is the function bar. The function bar contains the new functions of um, Deep Sky Camera Pro like stacking, time-lapse, star trails, animated star trails, anti-star trails. Uh, I would like to show these functions in a separate video a little bit later. But first, let's concentrate on a new exciting thing that's here um, on the bottom near to the shutter button called camera sensors. Uh, here you can switch between the different camera sensors on the back but it depends on the phone. Here we have a, um, here we have a Huawei P20 Pro. Um, the P20 Pro has three sensors on the back and one sensor on the front. As you can see here, we have five entries in the camera sensor, so-called spinner. And let me show you the first camera that's camera id zero that's the internal id so here as you can see oops that's uh, my laptop here so i'm adjusting the focus a little bit and camera id zero is the default camera um, in deep sky camera beta so here is no difference but now Let's check the next thing, that's camera ID 1, that's this, ah, that's me, okay, that's the front sensor, uh, that's totally new to Deep Sky Camera Pro, you can use also the front sensor to take pretty pictures of the sky or whatever you want. Um, on some devices you can take pictures in RAW and uh, RAW plus JPEG, as well as in JPEG, of course. So the next sensor here is sensor zero, uh, sensor two, I'm so sorry, here, let's switch to sensor zero, uh, that's sensor two on the back. It's the same thing as sensor zero. There's quite no difference. Uh, I don't know why Huawei configured uh, the device in this way, but the most exciting sensor is sensor number three. So, as you can see here, this is the monochrome sensor. The monochrome sensor takes pictures only in black and white, and this opens new things because you may can use filters like H alpha for that. Um, the only thing is the exposure time. Just take a look at the exposure time. As you can see here, you can take on Huawei P20 Pro also 30 seconds exposure time with a monochrome sensor. That's really exciting. But now comes the fourth sensor. And here we are. As you can see here, this sensor is, oops, here, as you can see here, this sensor is a telephoto lens. I think it's 
three times magnification. And that's pretty exciting that you can use um, one of the sensors for uh, as a telephoto lens. So that's really exciting. And here I go back to zero, to sensor zero. And as you can see here, this is the normal wild field camera and back to telephoto lens. Okay, here we are. So that's pretty nice. And of course, you can take pretty pictures uh, with this. And here I start things. It's only for demonstration only. And that's really pretty exciting. But that's not everything. I would like to switch to a different phone. Uh, the device will now be an LG G7 device. Hey astronomer, your images are taken. Thanks, by the way, that's the voice of my wife. Okay, let's switch to the G7. So here we are, that's the LG G7 device. Um, the G G7 device has two uh, sensors on the back and one front sensor. And when we go to the camera sensor spinner, you see the three sensors. And uh, this is sensor zero. As you can see here, aperture is 1.6 and focal length is 4.03 millimeters. When I go to the sensor number three, that's the second sensor. Oops. So as you can see, this is wild field. And as you can see, aperture has changed to 1.9 and focal length is now 2.38 millimeters. And uh, you can take raw, raw plus JPEG and JPEG. Okay, front sensor works uh, like the other things. And when we check uh, exposure time you can take all for 30 seconds but let's go back to wild field um, the numbering of the camera sensors is always the same zero is always on every device uh, the default sensor that's uh, deep sky camera beta uses all the time sensor number one is always the front sensor and all the other sensors are also on the back so that's it on LG G7. Now let's switch to a Xiaomi device. That's Mi 9T. I think it's also known as Redmi K20. So now we are here on um, the Xiaomi Mi 9T device, Redmi K20. And that's pretty interesting because as you can see here, the um, Xiaomi Mi 9T has three sensors on the back and one sensor on the front. But when we um, tap here on camera sensor, you see only two camera sensors. Zero, that's the default back sensor. And of course, one, that's uh, the default um, front sensor. Uh, the front sensor, that's very interesting, um, allows only uh, exposure times up to one second. So that's different to Huawei and LG. But okay, if you don't want the front sensor, use the back sensor. But where are the three um, sensors on the back? We see only number zero here. So we would expect a third and a fourth sensor, but that's not the case. That's a major problem on, on lots of other devices like Xiaomi, Google, uh, Pixel phones. Uh, we can see only the default back sensor. Uh, that's not a fault or a mistake of the Deep Sky camera app. That's a problem of the configuration of the phone did by the manufacturer. Means um, the so-called Camera 2 API, which is used to access the camera sensor, sees only one sensor on the back on specific devices. Uh, currently, I cannot change that, but I hope I can change that in the future. Okay, guys, that's all for now. Um, 
in the next video in the next days uh, I show you how to how to use the new functions here in the function bar